If you played Minecraft or Kingdom Hearts before, you've probably seen the way items and health are picked up in these games. Have you ever wondered how to do it in your own game? Stay with me and I'll show you in this video how to set up something that looks incredibly similar in Unity using the particle system. So let's get started. So what we first need to do is create a new particle system and tweak a few settings. First I will reset it so it looks like this in 2D space and I will add some gravity and the color will be green for this example. I will also set the start lifetime to 10 so that they stay in the scene a little bit longer. I will also change the appearance by going to the renderer and changing the render mode from Billy board. Uh, actually, no, we need to change uh, the material from the default particle system to the sprites default. And then that's basically it. The size will be um, not the speed, the size is here will be point two five. And what we also need for detecting if we picked up a particle or not is collision and triggers. So, and external forces because we will need uh, to attract the particles. So for the external forces, we can leave it like that for now. Inside of the collision, we will change the type from planes to world and the mode to 2D because we are in the 2D space. And what we then need to do is inside of the triggers, once we are, so we, we, we will ignore the inside trigger but we will set enter to call back now we will create a new game object i will create a sprite a square and name it particle collector and we will create a particle system force field inside of it as a child object i will i will change the shape to a box And let's just hit play and see what's happening. So as you can see, we now have a force field, but if we, if we go a little lower, the particles are no longer attracted. That's because if we go into the 3D view, we can actually see the particles not emitting in 2D space, but rather in 3D space. So what we need to do is inside the particle system, we need to change the shape of the emission. Currently it's a cone. So as you can see, it gets emitted into the space, but we can actually set it to circle and that way it will only stay 
on the x and y axis. And if we now take the collector, we can see that it's, it's a little bit too, the, the, the strength has to be increased. Now it should work. Yeah, we can see that even down here they will get attracted to the center of this cube if we now increase the range the end range you can see this effect even more the start range as well but we will leave it at one we don't need the speed in this case the attraction does nothing for us as well only the drag can as you can see if we increase the drag they get attracted more to the center than if we leave it at zero so personally i like to increase the drag to something about in this case we can do five or six six seems okay and the strength will be six as well let's just copy the component explain mode and paste the values and as we have been in in play mode we also need to set the shape back to a circle so now what we can do actually is set up a script that detects when the particles collide with the actual sprite so we also need the box collider 2d set it to is trigger and create a new script and i will just call it particle collector open it up in visual studio And now inside of this script, what we can do is create a reference to the particle system. So we need a particle system PS. And we also need a list or an array will be an array so um particle system dot particle particles and now inside of start we will get the component particle system and set the particle system equal to it the variable we have here And now what we actually actually need is a function that is called moment some somewhere in here or is it? in unity engine particle system jobs maybe particle collision event 
No, that's not it. On particle collision. Ah, on particle trigger was the function we need. So first we need an int and we need, uh, we call it particles alive and that's equal to ps dot particle count get trigger particles get trigger particles and the event type will be enter and so we actually need a list so we will change this to the list of particle system dot particle and just pass that in now in a for loop we will go over all the particles so particles alive and we will set the actually that's not the particles alive but the triggered particles so now what we need to do is for every particle so particle uh, particle system the particle t equals particles at the index of i p dot remaining lifetime is equal to zero and let's also throw a debug.log saying we collected one particle now we only need to say particles the index of i equals p and at the end we only have to say set trigger particles and it will be of the type enter and the particles list so if we now get go back into unity and attach this script to the particle system we can let's just add a ground so another sprite name it ground and we will also add a box collider 2d move it down a little bit resize it we can add a layer to this ground sprite and it will i i also uh, i already created a new layer it's called ground we add it to the ground and then inside of the collides with under collision in the particle system we will select nothing and then just the ground as you can see now the particles are bouncing a lot 
off the ground. So what we can do is we can actually remove the bounciness, control this. And that's right here on the collision bounce. We can set this to something like 0.2. And that looks a little better, maybe even 0.15. But now they're sliding off the edges, so we also need to dampen. And 0.4 works as I want it. So what we now are able to do is add this particle collector as a trigger because it has the box collider we can now just add it here and it will automatically check if it collided with this box collider and now it should already work that we get the callback when we enter, when the particle enters this collector, and we should get a debug.log. So let's see if that's the case. So right now it says value cannot be null. Let's see what's wrong here. So the reason for that is that this particles aren't even set. It's equal to a new list, maybe. Maybe that helps. Yeah. So now if we take the particle collector, we should be able to see the debug.log, but we can't. So where's the problem? We have a collider. Oh, it should not be a trigger. Okay, so we have to make sure that a box collider is attached to the game object that is not a trigger because the particles already are. And as you can see, the par particles now get destroyed when we touch them. And they also get attracted if we now increase the end range, we can actually see that happening. So if you found this tutorial helpful, I hope you leave a feedback, maybe give a like and subscribe. And if you have any uh, ideas what I can do next, anything you'd like to see, just leave it down in the comments. And also if you have any questions, of course. So see you in the next video.